Hey, Paul from Deutsche Auto Parts. Today we're going to be going over inspecting your cam follower on a 2.0T FSI engine, as well as uh, installation and removal of the high pressure fuel pump and uh, installing our stud conversion kit on your vehicle. Here we have our high pressure fuel pump assembly uh, for 2.0 TFSI engines. A uh, few notes of why you would replace it would be either failure of the pump itself, uh, something internally is a problem, or most often it's because this cam follower that mounts on like so has worn so far through that it's done damage to the pump itself. Now a note, an example of this would be here. If you see here this follower has worn completely through so if this were to be riding on the engine it would have caused damage to this part of the fuel pump which means it's not usable anymore and then uh, the camshaft in the vehicle would also need to be replaced when you are replacing this pump you are going to have to swap over uh, the fuel pressure sensor and the Schrader valve and depending on the style of fitting you have here on your original pump, you may need to swap that. This style uses this barb where you would have a hose that mounts to it. The older versions used a banjo bolt with a hard line that actually bolted into the bottom of this pump. If you have that, you're gonna to have to remove this part and then swap over the other part to uh, install it on your new pump. When removing the high pressure fuel pump on a 2.0T FSI engine, we're gonna start by removing all the connectors. Uh, this is gonna be the uh, fuel pressure sensor, and then this is for the fuel pump itself. So we're gonna start by just pushing back on the connector and removing them. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is bleed all the pressure off from the fuel pump itself. Now. Uh, these are extremely high pressure, so you want to be really careful when you're working with them that the pressure has been relieved from the system beforehand. So you get a rag and then you can kind of just push up into, into here with a small screwdriver. There's a Schrader valve you can just push and you'll see it'll release the pressure. It'll bleed off all the pressure and now we can work with the system. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do from there is remove this Schrader valve. This will give us access to this bottom torque screw that holds the fuel pump on. Without removing this, you're gonna have a tough time. And also something, once you crack it loose, this is a 13 millimeter, once you crack it loose, you might wanna put the rag back under there because you could leak off any additional fuel and then some maybe some pressure that's residual that you didn't get off. So there we go. We want to make sure when we when we're working with this because it is part of the high pressure fuel system that you have it somewhere where it's not going to get too dirty. Maybe you can leave your rag up here. Now we can start by removing the torque screws the T30 torque screws that mount the pump to the cylinder head itself. And you wanna be careful that when you're putting these in that you don't strip them or damage them. On this vehicle, uh, we are going to be reinstalling our stud kit. Uh, and what our stud kit is for is so that if you're checking these periodically that you don't have any problems with stripping. A lot of times the housing itself that this bolts to uh, is not used to getting the constant, it's not intended to be taken out so often where a lot of guys check these every 10,000 miles. They weren't intended to be removed that many times. So what will happen is they'll strip the threads on the inside from removing, from removing and installing the bolts so many times. So we can crack that loose and then we can crack this last one loose too and then we can get to the lines below. So 
we can go ahead and get our 17 millimeter. We're using a stubby in here to crack this bottom line loose. Uh, you can probably do this with a regular wrench, but a stubby makes it a lot easier. And you're all gonna wanna be careful of this nipple here, because if, if you're not careful, you can break it off while you're trying to loosen this up. Now, lastly, we have a banjo bolt fitting here on the bottom. There are two different styles of this pump. One of them uses a rubber line, the other one uses a banjo bolt fitting. Uh, the banjo bolt fitting uses a triple square and is much more challenging to get off, um, which unfortunately we have the banjo bolt fitting. So here we, we're gonna go ahead and take that off now. Now we're gonna be accessing the banjo bolt on the bottom. That is an eight millimeter triple square. Uh, we're gonna start by removing this PCV hose off because it'll give give us a little more room to work with in there. Uh, this particular vehicle has a catch can system, but normally you would have a PCV valve here. So we're going to remove this hose. Now, what you're going to want to do is pry on here a little bit and on the edges to release these tabs and then slide this off and get that out of the way. Now you want to be careful because this, this hose can be brittle because it is plastic. So it, and you're just gonna to wanna to slide that out of the way, maybe down a little bit. It should give you enough room to work with. So now we have our eight millimeter triple square that we're gonna get in there. And we're using a stubby ratchet because it does give you a little more room to work with. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure before you start trying to loosen this up that you have it, your triple square firmly seated in place because if you strip this, you're really gonna regret it. All right, now that we have our banjo bolt out of the way, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we keep it somewhere safe. And now we can finish taking off the T30s that hold this in place. Okay, so here we are, we have our pump off. And inside here, the high pressure fuel pump cam follower rides on this part of the fuel pump. And then there's our follower in here in the cylinder head. So we can grab our finger and pull it out and we can inspect it. So if we take a look, we can wipe it off real quick and take a look at how much wear we have on it. All right, so we're gonna be installing our stud kits for these, uh, for the bolts that mount the fuel pump to the vehicle. Again, the whole point of this is to ensure uh, that these threads here don't get ripped out from constant removal and installation of the pump. Once you put these in there, they're fixed and you'll ne they'll never come out there again. Um, you'll just take them off from the side. So. Now we can go ahead and thread ours in. And we just have the nut mounted in place there at the end. And what we should be able to do is just tighten, tighten it up to the point where, it, where the stud stops moving and now they're set in place. So here we have our new follower. And one thing we're gonna to wanna to do when you're installing a new follower is take a little bit of the excess oil that's down here from the engine and kind of get it on your finger or our gloves in this case. And you're gonna to wanna to kind of lube it up a little bit. This will make sure 
that it's not going in there dry. And then we can set that in place. One last thing we want to mention is when you're installing the fuel pump back in the vehicle, you are going to want to replace this seal right here because it does uh, seal the fuel pump assembly from the, en the engine oil. So, so we can pull that off and throw our new one on. And that's another one that you can kind of lube it up a little bit with the oil just to make sure it slides in place evenly. And roll that in place. And now we can put our fuel pump back on. You are going to want to clean up any excess oil that you have. Just to make sure everything seals. Alright, and when we're ready to install our fuel pump back on to our studs, you, because of the clearance, it's best to get this bottom one on first and then kind of rotate the other ones in place. And then we can get that all mounted in place. So now we're ready to put our nuts on. And what you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna get them all threaded in place, but you're gonna wanna tighten them down evenly because there is spring pressure from this pump. So. Tighten one, then tighten the other, and then continue to rotate in a circle until they have all hit the bottom. Now that we've gotten that triple square tight, we can take this 17 and get it in place. What you might want to do is just take it and butt the line in place and then slide the nut up and then tighten it. And we tighten this up with the 13. Don't go crazy, tighten it. And then we can put our plastic cap back in place. And we're gonna put our PCV back in place. And all you gotta do with that is get it in place and push it on, you'll hear it snap in place. We can plug in our two electrical connectors Now at this point, this car has an aftermarket intake, but uh, the only thing you would have left to do would be put on the engine cover if you have the factory intake on the vehicle. And you're all set.